Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I have lots of things to talk about, lots of things to show about everything here in around the last best morning show, Missoula, Montana. So let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Um, I'm talking about, uh, I got a new Flagstaff Friday video of the week. I have a bunch of news that are happening in and around the, the Missoula and Montana uh, U.S. regional areas. Um, I also got some events for you guys, so if you guys are uh, doing not doing too much for the holidays and you want to see what else is going on besides uh, hanging out with your family, uh, I'll, I'll have all that and more uh, along with some of the a bunch of movies that are going to be going to be coming out. Um, and this is my last show of the year. Um, I won't be doing my morning show next week because I'll be doing our Winter Days Camp, which is starting next week and which will run from Wednesday through Friday, December 27th to the 29th. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Um, to currently, it is 25 degrees this out. It is snowing, um, but of course, you would know that if you stuck your head out the window. Um, it is a high of 25 degrees. There's a 100% chance that it's already snowing. 80% chance lowered uh, tonight as well. But then, of course, Saturday, maybe uh, it's going to be uh, partly sunny and then mostly sunny. So if you guys are planning on going on, on the slopes, this weekend may be the weekend to do it as well to kick off all your snow. Um, I'll probably start doing the snow report pretty soon, but not today. I'm going to hold off on that because I didn't think about it, about it until just now. So Sunday, you can expect all that snow that just falls to start turning in, to start turn into sheet rock, if you know what I'm talking about. And, um, you know, your highs are going to be in 13s, your lows are going to be the 10s by the Sunday, um, and then you have that 40 to 60 percent chance of snow likely to happen. Um, let's talk about things that are happening in the news. Uh, last night was the winter solstice, and at the start of the longest night of the year on Thursday, um, the 21st of December, around 60 Missoulians gathered in Karis Park for memorial uh, for Lloyd Samuel and 11 other homeless people who died this year. This is the second year Missoula has joined in communities across the county in recognizing National Homeless Persons Memorial Day. Here is Dave Stromeyer, County Commissioner, with one of his statements. Um, we'll be airing the whole 35-minute uh, uh, memorial service um, on MCAT this weekend as well. Time to gladden the hearts of those who walked away with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. May we on this night honor those who have died without a home by looking deeply into our own souls and mustering the love and kindness to ignite hope. Indeed, life is short and the night is long, but individually and collectively, we have the ability to make a difference. Thank you. All right, that was uh, County Commissioner Dave Stormeyer. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, I, get, I guess I got a little itchy with my finger when turning to it. But, of course, this summer, the various local organizations that work with homeless people launched a new system called Coordinated Entry, which targets resources for those who are in the highest of need. Of course, winter is a bad time without shelter. The Palverella Center is the best place for most people who uh, are in, um, in between homes. Uh, I think that's the best way to uh, state it as well. Um, in the state as well, uh, of course, every, I hope everybody got their flu shot because nearly 200 new cases of influenza across Montana, including 40 hospitalizations, were reported over the past two weeks. Uh, the Montana Department of Health uh, and Human Services said th uh, Thursday, um, 42 new cases of flu were reported in Yellowstone County, and state health officials continue to encourage people to get flu shots as a way to avoid the illness. So just be aware that there is a, a, a big sweeping of the flu happening through here. So if you have any family members that have it, just be aware that you may want to wash your hands more often and uh, basically avoid spreading the disease as well. So um, if you are sick, you know, you may want to just put uh, some of those uh, – uh, I guess those face masks just to kind of prevent the spread of illness and cough into your arm. Don't cough into your hand because, you know, your hands touch everything, but this part of your arm really doesn't. So just, you know, if you have to sneeze, make sure you sneeze like this and not like this. Or sometimes even maybe you sneeze like this. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, whatever works, uh, just as long as it's not on your hands or if you do, wash your hands. Okay. 
So let's talk about some national news that has nothing to do with sickness. I don't know. Um, uh, the biggest tax rewrite is upon us, and Donald Trump is only a few days from signing the bill into effect. Democrats have labeled the Republican tax bill government for sale, with prominent Senator Elizabeth Warren describing it as a heist. With a 51 to 48 majority in the Senate in favor of the bill, and Greg uh, congressionally and congressionally passed by 224 votes to 201 on Wednesday afternoon, nonpartisan analysts say that the greatest beneficiary of this package will be the super wealthy, uh, multinational corporations, and the commercial property um, industry. Um, in the immediate future, the plan will see vast majority of taxpayers have a lower tax bills, but those cuts expire in 2025. By 2027, the Tax Policy Center estimates the overall charge would be negligible, and 53% of taxpayers would face higher bills, many of them in the lower income bracket. So that's what I got from the BBC News and the Missoulian. You guys can check that out by going on to either the BBC.uk or you can go to Missoulian.com for more of your local news and some of your national news as well. So let's move on. Um, I got some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Um, these are... Um, Basically, some of the uh, holiday concerts, along with a couple lectures as well, because um, you can't watch MCAT with, uh, without seeing some kind of lecture from the University of Montana. So without further ado, here are some of the new programs on MCAT. And when we come back, I'll talk about the new uh, bunch of new movies that are going to be coming out your, for your holiday break. As Yazidis have always been reluctant to share uh, details of their religion to outsiders, because usually those outsiders would go and write books or articles about Yazidis making false claims about the religion. The latest example of this happened in 1999 when there was a, a solar eclipse that happened in my hometown. My hometown was on the path of totality of the solar eclipse and was clearly seen. That attracted a lot of journalists from the region to come to my hometown to witness the exciting event. One of the journalists was from uh, Egypt after watching the eclipse, he became very curious to know about the Yazidis after he heard that they were the main, uh, fa or the, the majority of my hometown. So he began making interviews with clerics to get as much information as he wanted about the religion or in order to write about Yazidis. He did that and he got back to his own country, his home country. Six, six months later, he wrote an article about Yazidis with the title, Yazidis devil or sun worshippers. Among the many uh, wrong things he wrote about Yazidis, he, he said, he literally said that, I saw people with tails. cannot be forgotten. On this night, and every night through the end of the year, the light of this tree, your light, your memories that it represents, will shine in the darkness to light this corner of Missoula with the love that you sustain for those you have lost. It is a statement that Love never ends, and the darkness cannot overcome the light. 
And so we share this tree tonight, and again, I will say that it will remain lit every night from now through the end of December as a statement of your memories, of your love, of your loss. The 30th anniversary Partners in Home Care Hospice Tree of Light. our live coverage of the parade from this spot here. Uh, we are going to go ahead and take it down so we can broadcast the uh, lighting of the tree, which is always the most fun and kind of the pinnacle of this event. Uh, but again, we want to thank our sponsors of uh, Blackfoot and uh, Liquid Planet, also the Missoula Downtown Association for putting on all this, and a special thanks to MCAT, our own local uh, community access television, located right here downtown, for doing this live stream for us today. So keep an eye, stay tuned as we get geared up and ready to go to light that Christmas tree for the 15th annual Parade of Lights. All right, so that was the lighting of the Christmas tree that is downtown. You can watch the whole program by going on to MCAT.org, along with many of the other programs that you just saw. MCAT.org is your resource for media and community. Um, <laughs> Missoula's community media resource, um, MCAT, is a nonprofit uh, television station that helps promote the, um, the use of broadcasting equipment for people to get their voices out there in a media type format so we'll help you guys with youtube we'll help you guys with airing things on mcat like my show what, I, what my show is doing right now and we'll help you guys maybe make a social media presence get you started and then see how it goes from there for you so yep join us every wednesday here at mcat um, and also a quick little announcement about mcat is that mcat will be closed next week so today will be open from 11 to 7 and then all next week will be closed for the holiday break between christmas and new year's and then we'll be back on january 2nd uh, with our regular hours tuesdays through fridays from 11 to 7. But you can always sign up for our, this is more of me promoting, just so you guys know. Um, <laughs> we have Winter Days Camp. Winter Days is upon us, and kids, they have the day off uh, pretty much throughout next, uh, throughout all next week. And if you want those kids to uh, have a place, a, a fun, safe place to go, maybe learn a couple new traits along the way when it comes to um, editing, maybe uploading some things and um, content creation in terms of video making, um, come on down to MCAT. It is a great resource uh, from December 27th to the 29th from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, it starts, uh, price is $99, and it's a fair price, you know. But, of course, we're uh, more than willing to accept um, maybe uh, one-day drop-ins as well. So be uh, – we're completely flexible, so if you guys are interested in doing that, you can call us at 542-6228. You can email us, mcat at mcat.org, but of course, we will be gone pretty much throughout the holiday break, so be aware that we may not be able to uh, get back to you in a timely matter, but just be aware that uh, it is the holiday season, and um, you guys can get a hold of us anytime today to uh, sign up any of your kids. And also, we'll be here on Saturday from 11 till about 6 for our uh, Saturday drop in. So, Saturday drop ins uh, will be happening this Saturday, but they won't be happening on the th uh, the 29th of December, no, the, the 30th of December, which is a Saturday, which is a week from tomorrow. So, that's that. And um, let's talk about some new movies that are coming out. Um, this is Pre-Critic, and we're kicking things off with a brand new movie that's coming out that I heard was not as bad as most people were thinking it's going to be, but this is Pre-Critic, so I'm going to prejudge it. So from the song that talks about the urban jungle comes a movie, Reboot Cool, Reboot Cool, about Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart joining forces once again with a comedy powerhouse that is within Jack Black in a performance that will make you go Oscar buzz? Um, Jack Black plays a pretty girl trapped in Jack Black type body and the same with the three other teams. Uh, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle is a movie that follows 
arcade video game rules where if you die in the game as your avatars, you die in real life. Um, I wish I could be an avatar that doesn't have to uh, read the <laughs> this pre-critic. <laughs> um, the Greatest Showman from Hugh Jackman and the director of a commercial comes The Greatest Showman, which shows Hugh, which stars Hugh Jackman in the role of P.T. Barnum, a con man who starts the circus and brings together a bunch of sideshow in an epic way. Uh, watch this loosely plotted out movie. Uh, follow a guy who just wanted to make a musical that wasn't on Broadway. The movie is will exist throughout the holiday season, so be aware of the bear. Gotta be aware. Aware of the bear. Gotta be bear aware. From the studio who uh, thinks that once you go international, you can't go still, you can still go further, comes another Pitch Perfect movie. This third installment of the franchise that makes music with their mouth and adding music with instruments will throw off the whole dynamic of these little pitches um, because, the, hey, <laughs> Uh, they didn't uh, do that yet because, you know, whatever. A long story short, the girls are go on tour where they're not. Uh, liked by musicians because they don't have any skills beyond their voice. But let's face it, in this movie, uh, doesn't have any skills beyond worthless fans. Here's a bonus round, guys. Uh, Downsizing is about Matt Damon. Barf. In a movie where people who <laughs> literally shrink themselves to boost their own economic status. Let's hope this movie's net profit doesn't do the same. Um, Molly's Game has Jessica Chastain in it along with uh, Idris Elba in a money about money and gambling with illegal poker, but what poker game movie isn't legal? Um, but let's see how this one turns out. Um, all the Money in the World is known for completely reshooting all their scenes where Kevin Spacey left the movie for obvious reasons. Watch a family of gazillionaires must pay off a kidnappers, but the old man won't. Drama, 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 the end. Um... Phantom Thread has a new retire has the now retired Daniel Day Lewis in a movie where I assume it lets him finally use his um, native accent. Uh, he's British. Um, I believe he is a dressmaker who falls in love or obsession with a subject and makes a costume. That's the best that's ever been made. Uh, movies happen. Um, Father's Figures stars Owen Wilson and Ed Helms as fraternal twin brothers, but their slutty ma mama tells them that their fathers, plural, might be different among the two, which is why they're nothing alike. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito, and Eddie Murphy are already doing this in a movie called Triplets. Um, the Post, Steven Spielberg movie, you must have to go see that because Steven Spielberg made this movie, with Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep in a movie about newspaper, extra, extra, independent newspapers no longer exist with some kind of monopoly tie to corporate. Uh, of course, hey, MCAT is Charter, by the way, um, of course, and Charter hates net neutrality. So that is a little too uh, um, on the nose right there. So um, I'm going to end that. Um, there's a new movie that's coming out, and it's from the uh, flagship program. So here is the newest movie through MCAT and the fl flagship program.
was intense. Do you like Taylor Swift? Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council. The city of Missoula um, misplaced $3 million. And let's talk about that in Committee of the Whole. Um, during the preparations for the annual audit for the fiscal year 2017, they, find, they identified an error in accounting and budgeting. The issue began in 2013 and continued through 2017 with a smaller effect in fiscal year 2018 budget. The accounting mistake will inform some budget uh, decisions going forward. This is an elusive and um, complicated era. It requires a conversation about budgeting and accounting pr uh, procedures to fully explain the error and subsequent mitigation of efforts. Efforts. So here's John Engen. He uh, basically talks about a five-year error in the budget. And today I write to report that because of an accounting error that began in 2013 and carried through each fiscal year to date, we're presenting you with a plan to correct for that error, a plan that won't raise taxes and that will have little impact on service delivery. I'll leave it to staff who discovered the error during a reconciliation of our capital improvement program accounts in early November to explain the nature of the error. And since the issue was brought to my attention, we've been working to understand what happened, how to avoid such an error in the future, and the financial consequences of that error. In short, the city of Missoula needs to reallocate about $3 million. No money is missing. It was merely accounted for incorrectly. This did not change the city's cash balance. It changed the allocation among funds. No money was spent without budget authority uh, and council approval. Unfortunately, our policies provide for a healthy cash balance, a rainy day fund, if you will. And we're using that as well as anticipated budget savings, some additional budget savings, uh, new revenues from development activity and wildland firefighting, and some other one-time savings to write the books. What we're presenting today, as I suggested before, doesn't require council action, but we're reporting the error to you as we have to our auditor and our financial advisor and the public in the interest of transparency and good government. All right, so that was Mayor John Engen talking about that. Let's move on to the next quote. Um, th um, so uh, the whole idea behind this is that 2018, the fiscal year, will be edited to reflect this, and 2019 can move forward. Every year, the city works on 150 different funds um, that they have to allocate funds and move money around and all that stuff like that. Of course, today they talked about general CIP, public works, sewer, and wastewater were among those discussed in this meeting, which ha will have uh, some of the things that they're talking about. So here's Lee Griffith um, talks about the CIP fund and what went wrong. Equipment purchases are funded by issuing debt. We receive loan proceeds from the bank, so sort of think of this as a loan. So we get a bank loan that is money in that pays the CIP fund. Loan proce proceeds excuse me, should pay back the fund that bought the equipment. The cash flow was money out of the CIP fund to pay for the equipment purchases and then should have been bank loan funds into the CIP fund to net that out with a zero balance. Well, what happened was the CIP fund bought those equipment, those pieces of equipment, but the bank loan proceeds did not get put back into the CIP fund. This is the accounting portion here. They were accounted for in general fund, road district, park district, and wastewater. All right, so let me explain this uh, a little bit more clearly, but just imagine this. Let's look at like let's look at it like this. Um, you have a business card that you used to purchase items for work, like um, items and this and that. But you accidentally use your own card to pay for it. So you go to your boss and say, "Oh, sorry, I uh, I didn't use the business card. I totally forgot to use my own money and all the stuff like that. Could you reimburse me?" So the money that's used to reimburse you isn't from the business card. It's from the general um, um, employee fund. So in the ways, the money's still there, but it's just like the money that was supposed to go to like paying the other employees went to paying um, paying um, off your uh, equipment fee essentially for what you bought instead of buying it with a certain thing so the way that the purchases work is they purchased uh, items with the wrong money and the wrong funds 
and the other way around. So that's kind of what happened over there. So the budget is definitely out of whack and just needs to be balanced because the money that was used for purchases were from their uh, um, their general fund and not necessarily equipment fund. So there was money that went into the uh, um, general fund, which um, w so a lot of ways is like they got more money than they uh, than they should have gotten because they went to the general fund instead it should have went to the CIPs which goes to pay for the equipment. That's a little, I know that's kind of overcomplicated, but that's kind of how I kind of see it in my own metaphorical example is where you just kind of paid uh, with the wrong money. Okay, so there was no effect on overall payments, just so you guys know, an operational budget for the city. But what does this mean for the city balance? And here is uh, Lee Griffith once again. Hold on a second. Hmm. Put them back into the CIP. Those funds. All right. So, in a second, you'll you'll hear it. So, <laughs> here it is. Or cash in the bank. Now we have FY18 beginning fund balances after the correction. In the general fund, $614,000. That's a lot lower than we had anticipated. The road district and park district have negative fund balance. And the wastewater funds have a healthy fund balance and are able to absorb the correction. For our next steps, in the wake of the reallocation, we need to balance the FY18 budget and build back fund balance in each of the funds. In the general fund, we are reducing the general fund revenues in the FY18 budget by $316,000. These are those bank proceeds that need to go into the CIP fund. So this is the FY18 budget, general fund revenues, show those proceeds where they shouldn't, and we're putting them over in the CIP fund. All right, so they're just uh, course correcting the flow of money in from uh, that w went to the general fund, which should actually be going to the equipment um, CIPs. All right, let's move on. The next thing I'm going to talk about is um, basically there's um, $614,000 in the general fund that they want to raise to $1.5 million. They're going to take their time that they're going to use to uh, raise the general uh, uh, the general fund. $410,000 will be lost to the road district and $100,000 will be lost in parks district. Divide the divide and conquer in terms of the funds and to figure out what out what not to buy to help with the budget 2018 moving forward. So in a lot of ways, um, with the when they look for the CAPs, um, they're going to look at see what they can purchase with the, the funding and be like, okay, we're not going to do that. And um, so to help clarify, here's uh, Gwen Jones who wants to talk about the CIPs in more uh, layman's terms. The CIP is, is a big beast, is my understanding. And I, I, you were articulating how to change things in the future so that we don't have this issue again, just kind of splitting it out and having uh, tracking, it sounds like, different projects more individually instead of having the big, the big ball of wax there. And so I was just going to ask um, Jan, our auditor, one of my favorite constituents, um, if you had any thoughts, I mean, my understanding of an audit is you kind of come in and spot check and make sure that there are good practices. You're not going to necessarily catch something like this, but in your opinion, the the fix or the change in, in how to differently approach the CIP, is that something that you think is, what do you think? Because this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, that, is that on? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, great question. Uh, yeah. To your point, we certainly don't test 100% of things when we come into audit. We do it all based on risk of where we see things, um, the biggest risks lie. And in terms of this, you know, as Lee pointed out, overall cash was fine. Um, it's that individual classification that was the issue, where those proceeds went versus where they came out of. All um, right. So uh, um, that uh, let's move on to the next thing. Um, Let's see. Here's Dale Bickle. He's the chief, chief administrator for the city of Missoula, uh, and he talks about um, reimbursements for this. Big windstorm uh, a couple years ago um, that we've 
affectionately called Tripocalypse around City Hall. Uh, we had a, a lot of damage and a lot of work done, particularly by our Parks Department. Um, we filed a claim with our insurance carrier, or our, our insurance pool. I need to say that right because Jim Nugent's here. And um, but we uh, we filed a claim, and it's um, and it's about settled. And you know, we we believe is the the. The reimbursements we'll get for that um, will be between 103 and um, 119 thousand dollars, and it will. And so that's re reimbursing costs that we've that we've already incurred related to, to that. And so that'll help um, um, uh, grow the fund balance in in the park district for those monies we had already spent. So those are uh, one of the many solutions that they're coming up with to help balance the budget. Um, Brian Von Lochsburg talks about uh, coming back from the low 600,000 uh, general fund, and this is what he had to say. We're, we're down to a starting fund balance in the general fund of $600,000 and change, which is considerably lower than we want to be. We will be, by the end of the year, um, with, I think, fair to say, Dale, um, conservative projections on, uh, on the year since we're already well into it. Um, at 1.5, is that correct? And then this is really going to be the thing that we have to focus on in this budget season and going forward. Not that we don't. Fund balance, that 7% reserve target is always a critical consideration. Now, even more so, considering we're basically taking a couple steps back uh, with this. Um, and it will be uh, an important point going forward. But that distinction between the districts and the general fund and an enterprise fund, I, I think it's worth um, hitting a couple times, even if we, if I am repeating what other people have said. Um, <laughs> to get to a question, um, you know, I, I support as Julie brought up, making sure that we've that staff has the best available tools to do their job. But I'm curious, is it? using perhaps more of the modules or features of our existing package. It sounds like the proposed plan going forward is, is not, I mean, I know we're talking about planning for new software, but we can make use of the tools we already have in a more robust fashion to do this reconciliation in a better way. Is that, is that true? Yes. Okay. All right, so <laughs> that was his answer. That was his long question being answered. So um, I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, so the city of Missoula will move forward. This is a discussion item only, so they're going to be working on fixing this um, through their auditor as well. This is a first meeting uh, with a couple new faces in the city council, if you haven't already noticed. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact the city of Missoula at 552-6000. Again, that number is 552-6000. So, uh, uh, of course, you know, the website is just as good. You go to this website, you can find all the contacts where you can get, um, um, you can talk to the city and be like, you talk about your concerns about this as well and get more clarification. You can also go on to their website as well to find um, all their meetings and more. All you got to do is go to your government. You go to under city council, agenda webcast minutes. It brings you to this nice little page. And you get a list of hyperlinks with the agenda items. And when you see the MP3 and MP4, that's when you know that they've already done the meeting. Uh, this next meeting, of course, community forum is happening tonight at 7 p.m. But this is kind of an example. All you got to do is click on the agenda, and it gives you the agenda along with the video itself. And you see these hyperlinks right here on the uh, left side. Those is how you can get to the topic of interest that you are interested in. So it's as easy as that. And as quick as that, just to go to ci.missoula.mt.us. That's where I get all my information from in terms of doing my city council report. Um, right now, I got some um, art clips. And these are going to be the last chances you guys are going to get to see uh, art from the Zootown Arts Community uh, Center. And um, I also have an art clip that will be from the Missoula Art Museum, which also ends on basic – which wait, wait, wait. No, hold on. <laughs> the Clay Studio. So I have another one from the Clay Studio, which will end as well. So I have a lot of art clips. So I want to show them all before I wrap up. So here's the first one. And then when I come back, I have events. <laughs>
All right, welcome back. Now let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. We're kicking off with some of your Missoula events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Our first event is uh, all your inside uh, active Motion, all that sort. Jeez, I'm just terrible with this already. Uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Mismo Plus Roots, all happening this morning, starting as early as 9:30 and going well until noon, as well as today. Um, it's a great way to do some tumbles, do some foam pits, do some trampolines, and do some gymnastics for anybody who is interested in doing that. And their drop-ins are always available to anybody. Um, there's uh, Tiny Tales and Family Story Time at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. If you're interested in uh, having your kids engaged in reading and learning and learning some new words along the way, Missoula Public Library is the place to be starting at 10.30 a.m. A Christmas Carols at Missoula Public Library starts at 11.30, so when you're done doing your uh, books, you can enjoy Christmas Carols, candy canes, and hot chocolate at the library with when Jody Marshall and the bookends present a, an hour-long program of Christmas Carols in the library's lower lobby from 11.30 to 12.30 um, Science Friday, Make Your Own Snow, Families First Children's Museum is doing a thing from 11.30 to 12.30. Their family science activities are sure to bring a smile to your child's face and provide them with a wonderful learning opportunities at the same time. And then let's make snow with science. Cribbage and Bridge, for those of you who like to do Cribbage and Bridge, is going to be at the Missoula Senior Center starting at around 12.30. You can check that out. And if you're interested in going to the Glacier Ice Rink to do some skating, because tis the season to do some skating, and you get to skate with the one and only Santa Claus, um, he's like literally the only Santa Claus in Missoula, just so you guys know. Uh, he's coming to town. Or he's going to be at the Glacier Ice Rink um, as part of the annual Winter Wonderland, and he's going to be on his Zamboni. The skating session runs from 5 to 7.30 p.m. with Santa arriving at 3.30. He will make a return appearance on Saturday, December 23rd as well. $6 for adults, $4 for youth, and skate rentals are $3. You can go to Glacier Ice Rink. Dot com for more information. Predator feeding and the Missoula Insectarium is starting at 4 p.m. They will be feeding a cricket to one of their hungry predators at 4 p.m. every Friday, and you can join them as they explain and demonstrate how they capture and consume their prey. Um, Family Friendly Fridays are starting at nine uh, at 6 o'clock tonight at Top Hat Lounge, and it goes until 9. Uh, if you've had a long day and you're going to be hanging out with your kids as well, you might as well uh, tie one over while your kids get a run around and hang out with other kids that get brought by other parents who bring their kids to a bar. So, yeah, join that. Um, here are some of the late-night events that are happening. They're doing bingo at Dark Horse Lounge at 7 p.m. Sunrise Saloon is hosting a DJ Music Electronic. Um, actually, no, it's the Sunshine Room. Sorry, not the Sunrise Saloon. I'm just like, I was surprised because they don't, they, they don't do DJ, DJs. Um, it's uh, VFW is hosting a DJ Electronic Music. Dusk is going to be at the uh, Union Club. Um, JD and Western Front is going to be at Sunrise Saloon. Jameson and the Sword Seed will be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be blues and reggae music tonight for your Friday. Um, here is another art clip from the Clay Studio, and this will be the last chance you guys get to go check out the Clay Studio, and when I come back, I'll talk about your Saturday events.
All right, so those are some of the uh, um, art clips from the Clay Studio of Missoula. Here are some of your events for your Saturday. Winter Market is happening tomorrow morning from 9 to 1 p.m. at the Missoula Senior Center, and it's just across from Big, Di Big Dipper. You can't meet it. M miss it. Uh, Community Coach, Gingerbread, and Southgate Mall performances all day long. Um, Community Coach is a way you can donate to the uh, Salvation Army through your old and used coats. Don't get it too tattered, but they, uh, Missoula Textiles works with Community Coats to help fix up some of the uh, um, coats. But don't bring your coat that is um, unsavable, basically. Um, Ronald McDonald House presents Gingerbread House competition that's going to be there. Um, Southgate Mall uh, doing some holiday performances. Shout out to ASAP Adonai who will be doing it. This well until um, December 25th. Fourth, so, so it's December 24th is when all of their Southgate Mall events end in terms of Christmas type stuff. Uh, Skate with Santa, of course, the Glacier Ice Rink will continue their uh, Winter Wonderland from 12 to 2.30 p.m. with the big man um, on his Zamboni. You can take a picture of the kids and post for photos. And, uh, you know, the, yeah, it's happening that day as well. So late bird holiday bazaar. So if you're interested in getting some knickknacks and last minute gifts, Go to Imagination Brewing Company at 2 p.m. Uh, from 2 to 7 p.m. On, on Saturday, and you can stop and grab a beer to get all your last-minute items before the uh, – it's too late. Lots of great uh, local, handmade, and eco-friendly items to be seen. Lady Beetle Ornaments, Missoula Insectaria, is doing their own little uh, crafts pickup where you will be able to make some adorable ladybug beetle ornaments that will make a perfect decoration for your home. You can stop by and make your own one-of-a-kind lady beetle ornament from um, 3 to 5 p.m. on Saturday. Everything else is happening tonight on the 23rd in nightly events. Here are some of your nightly events that are happening um, if you're interested in going out and about. It's a Wonderful Life will be playing at the Roxy Saturday night, 7 p.m. Movie Cult Gremlins will be playing at the Roxy at 8 p.m. Absolutely, there's Chris Moon will be being at the Badlander Karaoke at VFW. The Shiver will be at the Union Club. Double Down will be at the Sunrise Saloon Country Music. Voodoo Horseshoe will be playing at the uh, Top Hat. Um, will be playing at the Top Hat Lounge. Um, there's a bunch of other events that are happening on Sunday as well. Um, a couple of ballet things, yoga, but pretty much it's pretty easy. Uh, Valley, uh, River Valley Church will be doing a Christmas Eve candlelight service starting at 6 p.m. Christmas evening mass if you're, if you're interested in doing mass uh, with Sister Rita Mud Athletic Center is doing a Christmas Eve mass at 4.30 p.m. on Sunday. Christmas in the Zoo. Zootown Church is hosting a uh, 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 a uh, sermon for Christmas at 10 a.m. on Christmas Eve on Sunday, um, starting at 10 a.m. And that usually gets pretty popular because uh, every time I've been by the area on, on a Sunday, just randomly, because, you know, who hot? <laughs> There's a lot of people there. They take up a lot of parking. So you can check all that out and more by going to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your everything you need to know what's going on in Missoula. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? I don't know. Go to MissoulaEvents.net. It's like, thanks, man. It's like, cool, whatever. <laughs> That's what's happening with that. I do have a special video for you guys. Uh, I got permission to use this video from uh, one of our uh, teens. Um, I, I don't know. There's, we got a lot of teens here at MCAT. Um, and this is one of them who made a nice little uh, music video about um, balling on a budget. So without further ado, here's this music video. And when we come back, I'll wrap up our show. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yo, DJ Caprera on that beat. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Young yeah. Jupk on that grind. Yo, Merry Skra. Christmas, man. Merry Christmas, everybody. Skra. Skra. Captain Cook about to get it. Yo. Yeah. Now listen just, just a minute. minute. It's Christmas and don't forget it. The merriest of the seasons, there's a reason why we dig it. Giving gifts is just tradition. Holly jolly, it's good living. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Take a look at what we're giving, yo. Gift giving, here's the 101. What if you want to give gifts, but you ain't got no money? Spend it on your honey. No cash flow, now you feeling like a dummy. Listen up and we'll run you through it. Me and Theo will show you how to do it. Falling on a budget. Oh, I need some gifts. Falling on a budget. Got that Christmas list. Ballin on a budget. Got five bucks in my wallet, yo. Cheap gifts, yo. man. If you want it, we got it. Yeah. Yeah. Got some slippers for my dad. Yo, he, he needs, needs that. that. Got a discount book for my sister. Yo, she'll, she'll read, read that. that. Buy that Walmart. 
roll back yo i need that my cash flow has been so so but i'll give my good friend some good back yeah balling on a budget oh i need some gifts balling on a budget got that christmas list balling on a budget got my bucks in my wallet yo cheap gifts man if you want it we got it yeah yeah, I went to Walmart to get some gifts Now I'm feeling super rich Cause I bought this pie for 50 cents Balling on a budget just makes sense Merry Christmas once more But you can't forget what came before It's Hanukkah, yo, 8 days of bliss Don't wanna miss this, ain't Christmas Balling on a budget Oh, I need some gifts Balling on a budget Got that Christmas list Balling on a budget Got my bucks in my wallet, yo Cheap gifts, man If you want it, we got it, yeah Getting gifts for my family and my girl Got no cash, but I'll give it a whirl New Lego set, my girl needs that This movie I found, my mom needs that This candy cane, my dad needs that That discount price, yo Yo, yo, yo Yeah. We all need that Ballin' on a budget Yo, I need some gifts Ballin' on a budget Got that Christmas list Ballin' on a budget Got my bucks in my wallet, yo Cheap gifts, man If you want it, we got it, yeah Shout out to DJ Caprera on that beat Shout out to my main man, Young Jumpka Yeah Yeah This is Captain Cook Yeah Yo, have a Merry Christmas And an inexpensive New Year Let's get up Yeah Yeah Well, guys, uh, that's about it for my morning show. Uh, if you are interested in uh, finding out more and watching all these videos that I've presented for you guys and watching reruns, uh, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. It's nice for major write out twice. We got a bunch of past interviews and past fun videos and more. All you got to do is click on videos and you're going to see all these past videos from past shows. There's me with the beard again. Um, you got Flagship Friday. I'll update that one. You got Stop Motion. That'll pretty much be on throughout the week and days. You got Mason Camo talking about winter days coming up here, up in here. Oh, God. I've been listening. That music video just really influenced me. And <laughs> but, uh, yeah, guys. Uh, MCAT.org. Winter days camp. Boom. Check it out. Oh, God. I just got to stop. God. There's white boys. Seriously. <laughs> But yeah, thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas break, um, holiday season, however you take it. Um, it's going to be cold out there. Um, the snow has fallen. It's going to start freezing over, so it's going to basically feel like sheetrock over the weekend. So just be aware, if you are going out and about, maybe Saturday might be the place, place to do it if you're going to be out and about doing some skiing, doing some sledding, doing some... Um, I don't know, getting a, a inner tube from your floating days and just going down the mountain because those are just as fun as anything else. So those are some of my suggestions. If you're interested in um, doing more things with MCAT, MCAT will be back in January for public hours from 11 to 7 p.m. Come down anytime, and I'll show you what you need to do to make videos like you see, you've seen here today as well. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Have a great holiday break, and that's about it. Mm-hmm.